We begin with the nature of our reality with what we call all that is. And uh, instead of using the G word, the God word, and, and having people get, get in uh, uh, fights about it, we're just going to say everything that is. That's, that's where we start. Okay? And um, as we uh, step down the vibration and go into a lower density or another dimension below all that is, we, we, uh, uh, we see light. And, and uh, the way that I think of light is, is its intelligence. It's, the, it's everything that is known and, and, um, and felt and, and, um, and really that is in a, in, a, in a knowing, conscious way. So we have light, and that's the, the lower dimension of all that is. And then light is, um, when, you, when it transforms uh, and goes into a lower dimension uh, yet, it's transformed into color. And we know this, this is so because of uh, prisms. They, they, it breaks it up into many, many different bandwidths of, of uh, multi-hues and many, many different types of colors. And then the color is uh, transformed into frequency, into sound. So the, all the bandwidths of color, when it's stepped down into the lower dimensions, it becomes sound. And this is what happens when, uh, when we are able to actually see sound. And, and this is, uh, these are all um, done by cymatography. It's, uh, or the, it's actually the science of cymatics. And so uh, there's a, a fellow that, that uh, invented this device called the cymograph. And he, what he did was he, I made this plate of uh, steel and uh, about an 18 inches uh, w w uh, in diameter and uh, put different uh, substances on it uh, such as um, silica and sand and, and oils and waters and so forth and then he would um, uh, introduce sound into that and these are the types of uh, photographs, graphics that he got when, when he did sound. Now, of course, these are two-dimensional representations of what, what sound would look like. Uh, but uh, they're, they're pretty amazing when you think about it, especially like the one on the far right at top. Uh, he, there you have um, the, the double spiral, which we see in, in um, sunflowers. And this is another uh, representation, the 38 hertz. Uh, that's a, a tone, pretty low tone, pretty close to the, the bottom of our ability to, to hear things. But uh, what a beautiful representation of, of sound uh, through a, a visual. So uh, I really like this um, definition of, of sacred geometry because it really it tells, tells us that uh, sacred geometry is what uh, is the, the very beginning of, uh, of creation of form. So in other words, when uh, light goes down into color and then color into sound, sound goes, steps itself down one more time and it becomes form. And the, the different geometries that, uh, that we see are created by sound. So um, uh, this is something I've, I've been studying very, very intensely uh, during the shutdown the last couple of years, um, specifically with the platonic solids. And we'll get a little bit more into that. But sacred geometry really is... Um, is the way that the universe is structured. It's, that, it's actually the, the, the core of, of form in, a, in our universe. And it's the way that we apply math, mathematics to some of the larger, vaster cosmological processes as, it, as well. So we'll see the, the larger numbers of, uh, of things um, represented in some of the, the smaller numbers which become frequencies and there's a there's a one-to-one -one mapping of that too uh, in other words as above so below um, and one of the one of the concepts of sacred geometry is what's called orders of mag magnitude and um, 
in that concept, we, we, we drop the zeros. And if you've ever studied numerology, that's actually uh, what uh, numerologists uh, do as well. They, in any number, they only use one through nine, and then they, they repeat that. So, um, so the zeros are not, not counted, and that's called the uh, a kind of a decreasing order of magnitude. And uh, one of our, our, our favorite of all geometers, who is somebody that studies geometry, is uh, Pythagoras. And he, um, he was really into music and art and, and geometry. He, he really didn't separate the three, you know. Um, he felt that if, if you were going to study the arts, you really needed to have a pretty good grounding in, in mathematics and specifically uh, geometry. And... Um, I know that there was there were certain geometries like the dodecahedron, uh, which is represents the element of ether, that he he forbade his um, disciples or students to actually talk about that because he felt like it was such a a potent and very energetic um, geometry that the world was not ready for it. So the, the tools of uh, geometry are pretty simple. They're the compass uh, and the straight edge. And uh, using the compass and the straight edge, you can uh, very quickly get these, these very simple geometric patterns. Uh, the circle and then the, the triangle uh, made by the intersection of a number of lines and then the square. And then the Vesica Pisces, which we see in many, many uh, great works of art and actually all over the world in terms of uh, spiritual practices. So this is, uh, uh, seems like it's complex, but it's actually a very simple diagram of what you can do with just a straight edge and a, and a compass. And we see the flower of life in, in many representations uh, uh, especially when you start studying studying the metaphysics of, of life, you see you see this pattern all over. Uh, the ancient uh, Tibetans they they actually saw a pattern called the Sri Yantra uh, when they would uh, uh, use their mantra Om. So they would t intone Om, and then uh, they would see this in in their mind's eye. Welcome. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it took a while to find this. Uh, take, take any seat you like. <laughs> very good. Uh, three sixes and nines. The, these are very interesting numbers, and um, you'll, you'll see a lot of these numbers in the, the, uh, in the actual frequencies of, of the platonic solids and the, the instruments that I'll be playing today, which are the harps. So three is the, uh, is the physical, it's the form. Six is uh, the consciousness, the mind, and nine is the spirit. And nine is, um, is a very, very potent number in that it's, uh, it's a number of completion and it's a very, very highly regarded spiritual number. Uh, and also threes is uh, threes uh, represent the now or the present moment. Uh, six uh, goes back to Samaria, and Samaria is uh, was around about five thousand years ago. Uh, if you go back to Mesopotamia and the place where Iran and Iraq are right now, the Fertile Crescent, that's where the Sumerians lived. And um, much of uh, their mathematics was a base, uh, base 60. And so six was a very important number for them. And nine uh, is a, a number that really represents Lemuria, Atlantis uh, very strongly. Um, it is a very highly spiritualized number. And um, even though that's way, way in, in the past, it, um, it really has, the, the influence of, of those civilizations still, still uh, strikes us today. Um, now, the Platonic solids, um, these are, uh, these
these are actually the 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 very core of what we're talking about today and and the the thing that I've studied most uh, in terms of the sacred geometry so the platonic solids have um, there are only five of the, of these geometries in the known universe and they have they all have these very specific uh, definitions so if you look at um, at each one of these uh, platonic solids, you'll see that all the faces, all the planes are exactly the same. No matter how you turn it, you're gonna end up with either a triangle or a square or a pentagon, okay? And each on, on each one of these, the edges are the same length as well. No matter how you turn it, it's gonna be the same, same length of the edge. Um, there's only one angle present throughout uh, each one of these ty uh, these shapes, like on that fire fire element on the far left, uh, that angle is 60 degrees. Uh, on the earth element, that angle is 90 degrees, and on the ether element, that angle would be 108. Okay. And um, uh, one other very interesting thing is that is that if you placed any one of those platonic solids inside of a sphere, like if you had a crystal ball, each one of the points or vertices would act, would touch perfectly the, the inside of that crystal, crystal ball. So uh, there's an implication of this, of, of the circle or the sphere as well. So this is uh, the fire element, the tetrahedron, and um, one of the aspects of any geometry is that when there's movement, uh, there's, there's energy generated. And you'll see that in uh, not only the sacred geometries, but even in the, like the migration of animals, you know, migration of elk around the world or, or uh, the whales or, do or dolphins. There's vast uh, energy that's generated by all these migrations. Um, the second one is the hexahedron, and um, this is the square. And then the octahedron. This has eight sides, and they're all triangles. The dodecahedron is uh, is uh, got five um, uh, five edges, and that's the 108 that we were talking about. And this is the uh, element of ether, the one that uh, Pythagoras was <laughs> really didn't want that to get too far out because he thought it was a very important um, sacred geometry. And then uh, there's the icosahedron. This one actually has, uh, has 20 sides and they're all triangles. And this is the element of air. I'm sorry, it's the element of water. Okay, so Again, we have the triangle, and the, that angle is 60 degrees there. Each one of the angles is 60 degrees. The square, each one of the angles is 90 degrees. And the pentagon, each one of the angles is 108. So we have the tetrahedron, the hexahedron, and the uh, dodecahedron. Um, now, one of the things that we, we do, and, and the reason I'm, I'm explaining this is because these, all these numbers actually, uh, you'll find these in, in other processes in the universe, plus these are the, are the one to one correspondences of the frequencies of the uh, music that I'll be playing later on today. So, um, so when you take 60 degrees and multiply that by three, which is the number of, of actual angles in that triangle, you get 180. And 60 is a, is a B. It's, uh, it's a, the frequency of a very low B. And then when you multiply that by three, that becomes an F sharp, okay? And then uh, when you take that 180, which is the F sharp, and multiply that by four, which is the number of, of sides or faces in, uh, in the triangle or in the uh, tetrahedron, you get 720. And that's another uh, F sharp as well. So, and that's, that's the way that we, we find these different uh, frequencies and the different notes in, in the work that we'll be doing today. 
So here's a little breakdown of the fire, air, earth, water, and ether elements. And um, these uh, platonic solids, they all map to one of the elements, including ether. And these are co really considered the building blocks of the universe. These, these are the, the uh, things that, that actually create form in our reality. And uh, again, we have all these, these numbers at, at the bottom, and we'll be playing these, these frequencies on the, on the harps a little bit later. Now, this is the cosmic, what we call the cosmic equivalence. So we have 60, which is a B1, and uh, you'll notice that there are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. Uh, our electrical systems that surround us are 60 cycles. That's uh, it's cycling at uh, 60 cycles a second in, in any of the alternating current uh, systems that we have. And 60 is the base that Sumerians used for their uh, numer uh, numerological system. So uh, 60 is, uh, is very important. It's a very ancient uh, number, and, and people, start, people knew that it was very important many, 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 many years ago. This was 5,000 years ago that the Sumerians used 60 as their base. Now the 90 is, like I said, the F sharp. And um, the nine, if you take that zero away, is the number of perfection, uh, of completion. It's the highest spiritual, spiritual vibration of all the numbers. When you're studying numerology, uh, somebody has a nine or something has a nine in their, in their numerology, it, it's really considered the, 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 like the apex of, of how far you can go with um, your, your numbers. And this is part of the hexahedron. And you notice that this square, um, it's, it's, uh, it's very similar to a block of salt. Uh, that, that is the molecular structure of salt. It's, it's a hexahedron. So we have these, um, all of these uh, uh, platonic solids as represented in nature. Uh, uh, you'll find it naturally in, in just about uh, anything, that you, anywhere you go. So we, this, this uh, angle right here is the uh, angle of the pentagon, which is the, the face of the dodecahedron. So 108 is a, a very important number uh, in uh, Buddhist and Christian doctrine. Even the Vedics, they have uh, 108 as being very important. And that is uh, an A2, and that means it's the second octave of... Uh, of um, of a octave is um, is a kind of a designation. If you look at at all the A's on a piano, it goes up in, in octaves, and that's the the second second A uh, on the piano scale. So um, it's interesting that 108 is the diameter of Stonehenge. Uh, this is Stonehenge is a very ancient uh, uh, architecture, and uh, uh, they, it's really based in sacred geometry as well. Um, the moon's radius is 1080, uh, 1,080 miles. And again, we take, take that zero off to get that, um, that basic number. Um, So 144 is, uh, we have 14, uh, 40 minutes in a day. We have uh, 144,000 chosen ones, and this is both in Christian and New Age doctrine. And we have um, 144,000 days in the Mayan Bactun, which is uh, the Mayan year. So uh, 1440 is the octahedron of the total, total of all of its angles. 360 is uh, the degrees in a circle. If you look at all the, any circle, you know you'll know that you have 360 degrees, and um, you'll, this is the number that you find in the acosahedron, 3600. Again, we drop the the, the zeros. 
Uh, we have um, 360 days in a year. Again, we go back to the Mayans. They really knew a lot about uh, cosmology and um, it's, it's kind of too bad that we've gotten away from those very ancient calendars because um, <laughs> I think when we when we went into the Gregorian calendar, it kind of goofed us all up and, and we got all off of the natural uh, natural way of uh, actually living our lives. So here we get, you know, we're looking at the moon's diameter. I, the, before we were looking at the moon's uh, radius, but uh, there it is, 2160, which is uh, the total number of degrees in the hexahedron. And uh, 2160 is also one astrological age. Now, now we just got out of the Piscean age, which was 2160 years, and now we're we're just beginning the Aquarian age, and so we have another 20, 2160 years to go to, to get that. So here are the, these are numbers that are, if you really look at, at some of these, um, these numbers, you'll find them in, in natural processes and, and also uh, numbers like the diameter of the Earth, uh, 7920. And uh, so we have um, not not only the uh, the larger processes and diameters of the Earth, but y you'll hear these at, in some of the frequencies that we play today. And there's that 2160 again, which is a C C sharp. It's one great month in a in the zodiac. And um, this is. Uh, this is very interesting here. Uh, if you've ever heard of the procession of the equinox, it's, you know, the world, our, our Earth, actually kind of spins on its, and on its axis and does a, kind of a, a strange little elliptical. And uh, it takes uh, 25,920 years, which is called the pre precession of the equinox, to actually create that circle that you see there. Okay, so we have uh, the diameter of the sun is 864,000 miles, and 864 is a frequency of, of A6. So um, there's uh, 24 hours in a day times 60 minutes, that's 1,440 minutes, and then that many minutes times 60 seconds is, is equal to that. So we have all these... Uh, these uh, similarities, 864,000 throughout the cosmos and, and really kind of delineating our, our major uh, or uh, our major spheres and our planets and our, our sun. Uh, it's also one platonic season, which is three months uh, in the Mayan calendar. So 432 is one of the most important numbers, uh, according to jo Joseph Campbell. He was a, one of my favorite uh, of all mythologists, and uh, he, he uh, in all of his studies and all of his travels around the world, what he said that was that 432 was one of the most important of all the numbers, that uh, it was present in so many of the cultures that he, that he studied. Uh, in in some way or, or form, and believe it or not, we have 432,000 miles is actually the radius, which is the uh, from the center point to the the edge of the sun. 432 squared, uh, as well as also the speed of light. Or actually, it's it's not 432 squared. It's actually um, 432,000 squared. That's 186,000 uh, miles per second. So, um, and this is a direct quote from Joseph Campbell, it's the most important mythological number in history, 432. So, um, 440 is, is a standard of, of tuning that uh, most people use. When I was in the orchestra, I, I played horn, and uh, the concert master would, would get up out of his seat, and he was a, uh, always a violinist, and he would give a note, and that was always the 440. 
440. That was A440. That was the pitch and the frequency that um, that everybody tuned to so that everybody would be on the same frequency and pitch. So, but in, in bygone eras, uh, before the Second World War, um, 432 was one of the standards of, of pitches that, that we used, and 432 is actually much closer aligned to the to the um, uh, the vaster cosmological processes. So, um, in the last 12 years or so, I've been tuning all my instruments to 432, A432, including piano. My piano at home is tuned to that. Um, and uh, these, the A's that I have in my instruments over here, those those are tuned to 432 as well. And I really feel like we're going back to that standard uh, because it's a much more expansive uh, feeling uh, for the body. So uh, the Fab Fibonacci sequence, so this is another beautiful representation of sacred geometry. If you look, you have actually two spirals, one going uh, clockwise and one going counterclockwise. Can you see that? Uh, and uh, there's a, a very specific uh, numerological sequence uh, that's used to get this, this spiral, uh, which is found in sunflowers and many uh, natural uh, natural things and basically what you do is you take a number like zero and you add one to it and then you get one and then you take that number and add that the last number to it one plus one is two and then one plus two is three and then two plus three is five so you take the last number and you add it and it keeps going into this uh, beautiful spiral and it's the same spiral that you'll find in nature, especially in things like the sunflower and um, the whelk, whelk shells have that as well. And um, natural overtones, uh, the, the reason I'm bringing this up is because the sac sacred geometry follows the same kind of patterns as the natural overtones in a scale. And, uh, and um, the, this is actually a representation of a vibrating string and the vibrating strings of these harps and each one of these harps has 36 strings that are vibrating all at the same time but you get a very very complex uh, uh, series of overtones and this is another another view of the, those overtones and the Chinese uh, actually uh, uh, use this in instrument it's called the guquin and the, the little uh, you can see these little uh, markers on the instrument those those are actually the natural overtone so they they were playing uh, the this, this overtone music many thousands of years ago and uh, <laughs> here we have a turtle shell and we have a, a couple little elk horns <laughs> And this was our our first harp, and I'm I'm actually building one of these. <laughs> just don't ask me why. I just I just think harps are, are great, and I wanted to go down back to the very basics. <laughs> and so the the that turtle shell harp kind of evolved into the lyre, and then uh, another beautiful harp. And um, if you know you know if you take a, a piano and open up the lid you'll look inside of it and it's it's got a harp inside of it too so even though it's got hammers that play it um, it's still a, still a harp and these are the this is just a little chart that I put together about the platonic frequencies that we just talked about 60 90 108 um, and some of these other ones 720 uh, uh, 1080 and and how similar they are to the Fibonacci sequence and the natural uh, harmonic scale as well. So there's a lot lot pointing to the the importance of of this these sequences of numbers. And um, we we talked about the standard of tuning of, of 440. And so. If you use the standard of 440, the, these are the frequencies of the notes 
uh, going up the scale, all 12 notes. And you'll notice that uh, ev every one of them, except for the A, the 440, is a, has a fraction. They're not a whole number. Uh, however, the Platonic uh, series actually has only whole numbers and, and no fractions. So here's uh, uh, the pentagon, or pe uh, like a pentagram in, in nature. We have okra, we have a sand dollar, we have an apple. I think this is a papaya and uh, tomato. So we, we have these, uh, these fives and these 108s in, uh, in nature. And this is a, a perfect equilateral triangle. And this is um, a, a diatom, which is a, like a one-celled microorganism or, uh, you find in the ocean. The tetrahedron, uh, that's found, found in a fluorite crystal. And here's a, a salt crystal. We talked about that, the hexahedron. And here's a, a beautiful dodecahedron in uh, pyrite. And also pyrite has the octahedron as well. And here's a, a, a adenovirus, and there's that icosahedron. It's 20 sided. So we have uh, all these um, sacred geometrical forms uh, manifesting itself in, in nature. And there's another icosahedron in pyrite. And uh, this is a, uh, a chart that I, I created uh, in trying to uh, map the different frequencies to the platonic solids. And um, what I did is I found that there are five uh, frequencies that correspond to each one of the elements, and then five extra ones. So I'll be playing those today. And uh, J just so that you know, there is some some mathematics and there's some <laughs> the method to this this madness that you'll be listening to, and this is one one example here. Um, the way that uh, I take the 60 degrees. Remember the angle of the tetrahedron is 60 degrees, and that's a B, and then the hexahedron, uh, 90 degrees, and that's an F sharp. And then we have the dodecahedron, that's at 108, and that's an A. And when you put those two, well, those three um, notes together, you get what's called a B7 chord. And if anybody plays guitar, uh, that's, that's a fairly common, uh, common uh, harmony or chord that you play with, like, in the E major uh, scale. So here's another another one of, of my um, computations, and um, this this particular one is called the cosmic chord, and I'll be playing that as well. And that's that's it for this uh, particular <laughs> uh, little part of the talk. Now, what I'm going to be doing is. Uh
Okay, this is the water element. This is the element of ether, the dodecahedron.
This is the fairy tuning.
So this is the cosmic chord. This is air and water. <laughs> <laughs> 